Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. Special thanks to all of my patrons. My name's Neil and it's time for the next episode of the Book of Boba Fett. It is five minutes past midnight, early Wednesday morning. I'm still up. I'm ready to go, so let's do this right now. Let's react to the latest episode. This is episode five. Uh, I'm psyched to see where this goes because we had that great tease at the very end of last episode, episode four, where we heard the Mandalorian's music when, when Boba and Fennec were talking about hiring additional muscle. So does that mean that we are bringing Din Djarin in? Are we bringing in... Uh, some other characters from the Mandalorian storyline to help Boba and Fennec in this moment of need as they try and consolidate power against the Pikes in uh, Mos Espa. <sighs> Only watching will tell. Um, I'm excited to find out, so let's jump right into it, guys. This is Chapter 5 of the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. They've got cows and... Uh... Tatooine, I'm guessing, is where we are? Yes! Mando! With the spear and everything. So where is we? We aren't on Mos Espa, I'm guessing. Where are we? Oh! This is awesome. Oh, his armor is so boss. I'm here for Cabo Baez. <laughs> well... If I see him, I'll let him know. I see him right now. <laughs> That's not me. Looks to me like you're surrounded. These guys don't know him yet. I can bring you in warm. <laughs> or I can bring you in cold. Or I can bring you in cold. <laughs> oh, they're fighters! Oh, and he's still got the dark saber! Of course he does! Oh my god, this is so cool! Wow, he just cut that that half cow in half. He quartered a cow. Oh. Now he's got his hands full. Wow. He's going in cold. Oh man. They're not going to mess with him. He's hurt. He needs a back to tank. Uh, he took a took a big hit on his leg there. And I think he got hit on his forearm too? This is like not the Book of Boba Fett. This is The Mandalorian Season 3. Return of the Mandalorian. Ah! Oh, geek out on this episode, guys. I got a shit-eating grin and it's not going anywhere. Oh. I haven't seen one of these before. Have we? Super cool, though. It's a ring world. I've seen it in other sci-fi. Something similar in, um... Interstellar, Halo, but I can't say I've seen it in Star Wars. Super cool. Man, he's in rough shape. Is that... No, it's not a pike. I don't know that species. Oh, elevators are so awkward. There's some weird... Uh, shifting in the corners here. I'm trying to figure out whether it's to do with shooting in the volume or not. Oh man, that's like... Serious. So I didn't know that that species were the Clatoonians. So we've got the Trandoshans, the Clatoonians, and another one that I... I'm sure I, a couple of you commenters have told me in previous episodes what it is, but I haven't yet memorized. Oh. Are these his marks? Or is this something else? Ah, he's with the armor. Tend to him. Just I don't know the, if I would ever see you again. Just the Thank three of them? Saving me on Navarre. 
will put you to work soon enough. What weapon caused such a wound? The dark Please. saber. Paz Vizsla. Bring it to me. That's Paz Vizsla. Did we just hear that correctly? Because it was his... Another Vizsla who had it back during the Clone Wars. I'm trying to remember his first name. What do you know of this blade? Whoever wields it can lead all of Mandalore. If it is won by creed in battle. <laughs> no big deal, though. It was forged over a thousand years ago by the Mandalore Tar Visla. Ah, uh, Visla made it. Mandalorian and Jedi. Then you may join our covert as we rebuild. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Uh oh. That that's his family's. Are we just with them all day? All episode? That's kind of amazing if Where did you come upon the dark saber? If we are. I defeated Moff Gideon. Mandalorian steel is meant for armor, not weapons. Then forge it into armor. Interesting. He's just giving it up. Man, I'm good it's sad to see the spear go, but what new armor does he get out of it? Have you ever heard of Bo Katan Kreese? She once laid claim to rule Mandalore based purely on blood and the sword you now possess. But it was gifted to her and not won by creed. Yeah, that was Sabine who gave it to her. Her rule ended in tragedy. They lost their way, and we lost our world. Oh, we're flashing back? We're getting all this history of Mandalore? Mandalore wow. strayed away from the path. Eventually, the Imperial interlopers oh, this is beautiful. all that we knew and I mean, loved in the night of a thousand years. The devastation years. of a planet, but still beautiful. Like, it looks so good. Man. Oh, tell me this doesn't have uh, the opening scenes of T2 vibe all over it. <laughs> what shall I forge? Something for a foundling, Grogu. He's no longer in your care. But He's with his own kind now. We're making Beskar armor for Grogu? How, how adorable is that going to be? What shall I forge for the foundling, Grogu? A helmet? Does Grogu get a Beskar helmet? <laughs> Does this mean we get Grogu back in Mandalorian Season 3? Because we all assumed he was done and we were moving on. Chainmail? Oh, it's adorably tiny. Is it like the Mandalorian equivalent of Mithril? I hope you get something else out of that giant spear, too. There's a lot of Beskar going to waste right now. Why does it look so heavy in his hands? It gets heavier with each move. Oh. That is because you are fighting against the blade. That's so weird. It's just light, right? Why is it so heavy? Cannot control it with your strength. Control it with your mind. He, he's basically he, going through Jedi training. Mind. This is crazy. Maybe the dark saber belongs in someone else's hands. Oh, right now we're already going to challenge him for it? Do you agree to this duel, Din Djarin? I do. Tough to say no, right? <sighs> on, a, on a railless walkway. It's so very Star Wars. I love it. So what... <laughs> I mean, he's like a flamethrower, isn't he? Oh, no. He's got like a... I don't know what that... That, that vibro blade. It almost feels Doom-like. This is gonna have to be a quick learning curve if he's gonna win this. Oh, and they're without jetpacks, so if you go off, you're hooped. Fate has brought this blade back to my clan. No, he can't use it either. It's weird that it, they're playing it so heavy. I mean, this feels like almost new mythology about the dark saber. It is done. Din Djarin, have you ever removed your helmet? Yes. 
I have. Then you are a Mandalorian no more. According to Creed, one may only be redeemed in the living waters beneath the mines of Mandalore. This is the way. Huh. He's not going to stay with her. She could have challenged him and she would have taken it off him. He's without the spear. He's got a tiny little thing of armor. I feel like that's a low... Uh, I get the symbolism of it, but he gave up so much Beskar in that spear for a tiny little parcel of chainmail, I'm guessing. Non-stop to Tatooine. <laughs> Metal detectors. One. Let's get, get the whole arsenal, I suppose. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, it's a valuable suitcase right now. So why is he going to Tatooine? If he has to get to the mine, the living mines on Mandalore. Oh, it's even shaped like his head! Ah! Adorable! Why is he going to Tatooine exactly? I don't quite get this. I mean, I get why... I, I get that he'll need to be here for the story so that Boba can hire him, but... But what brings him here prior to that? Oh, this is a new little droid. Oh! Maybe a ran. Yeah! What an entrance! Indeed. Hey, look, everyone, it's Mando! <laughs> Ooh. You said you found me a replacement for the Razor Crest. Yeah, should bring the cash. What's what's the new ship? What? Ready to have your mind blown? There's a pod. This is an N1 starfighter, handmade for the Royal Guard and commissioned personally by the Queen of Naboo. This is a pile of junk. Yeah, this is like a a forty year old ship from Episode One, isn't it? Without any paneling. I know she doesn't look like much, but you got here a lot earlier than I expected, and I'm gonna add on some custom modifications that'll make her faster than a father. And did I mention she can jump into hyperspace with no docking ring? I mean, come on! You gotta see the potential! Okay, no docking ring, that's... He's gonna be here for a few days, he might as well uh, help Boba while he's waiting. <sighs> you know, it'd be a lot faster if he helped. <laughs> oh dear. Where did you get this? It's brand new. Well, I love this Jawas. cute little the Jawas had a turbonic venturia similar chicken droid. I don't ask, they don't tell. They get me what I ask for in exchange. I let them pick through my dumpster. Can I meet them? <laughs> I've dated a Jawa for a while. They're quite furry. <laughs> furry. He's had a run in with these guys already. Just get the parts you want, the specs you need, and I'm gonna make it work, all right? I dated a Jawa. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. I love it. Oh, that's okay. I'm working on me right now. Just go find the parts. I'm working on me right now. Oh, uh, uh, now we get like an A-team montage. I love it. Uh, this is so much pleasure. Just fun, fun, fun. Using this kinesio switch right here. You hit this button. So it's just nitrous. Your exhaust manifold, if you know what I mean. <laughs> He's adorable. Ah, this is so much fun. It's already got a nice gloss on it. I feel like they they wouldn't right polish there. it until it was all together, but. His head was stuck. <laughs> They said they crawled under a pike spice runner and crimped it off while they were refueling. <laughs> little fellas. Stole it from the pikes. Well, thanks. Thanks? What? Yeah. Are you kidding me? What'd you do that for? You're gonna spoil them. <laughs> You're trying to make me look bad. <laughs> ah, it's a good looking ship. I dig it. Yeah, it's like a classic muscle car, isn't it? Or like, it's like a classic Corvette that's been given... Oh. Cannons, laser cannons. It's almost as shiny as his helmet. 
It, it looks like the the droid port might be uh, suitably Grogu sized, if and when it comes to that. Are we gonna have a comic moment of failure before it, over. it kicks in? Shouldn't we run a diagnostic first? Nah. Send her up. <laughs> well, this is just gonna be a rocket ship. Ah, oh, looks so good. A little bumpy. Oh, it's interesting controls. But she's a starfighter, so fly her like one. Okay. Yeah, he's he's got a dark saber and a starfighter. I mean, he's basically a Jedi pilot at this point. Without the control over the Force. Oh, we're basically going pod racing. This is brilliant. This is so much fan service, but I love every second of it. Whoa! Awesome. Let's see what she's got. Is that the same kid you saw the last time? <laughs> Boom! Right, now he's just showing off. Oh, that's oh that interactive lighting is so good. Was I doing something wrong, officer? Sorry, officer, but my transmitter isn't hooked up yet. Uh, hold on a second there, lieutenant. I think we can let him off with the warning. This is this, is this, uh... Thank you, officer. Kim's convenience? I'll have that taken care of. <laughs> Your voice is mighty familiar. <laughs> Did you used to fly a Razor Crest? Yeah. I think you have the wrong guy, officer. You mind answering a few questions? <laughs> <laughs> Gone. You want to go back to base? And fill out reports all day? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> nice little callback to season uh, two of the Mandalorian. That was the one with the frog lady and the ice planet. They bailed him out with the giant spider on the top of the Razor Crest. Well, Kim's convenience did. Oh, by the way, an old friend of yours dropped by, said she was looking for you. A friend of mine? She Fennec? told you her name? Fennec Shan. <laughs> <laughs> by any chance, are you looking for work? Might could be. Might could be. Hey, is good. Tell him it's on the house. But first, I gotta pay a visit to a little friend. A little friend? Does that mean Grogu's coming? <laughs> ah! Thank you, Bryce Dallas Howard. Oh. Is Grogu gonna help Boba Fett? Because, oh, that's so exciting. Grogu in Beskar chainmail using the Force against the Pikes is what we have to look forward to. Ah, uh, oh, so happy. So much fun stuff in that episode. Uh, and we didn't do Boba at all in the book of Boba Fett. It was all about the man, about Mando, Din Djarin, just just a little flavor of Fennec at the very end to tie us back in. But I love everything we did there. We we learned more about the dark saber. This this heaviness about it. I don't feel like we've ever uh, seen that before. So is it? Uh, why why is it so hard for him to use i mean obviously it's a it's it's a weapon for force users does that mean din's going to learn to master the force at some level is is could he be the second jedi mandalorian um does does he have a future as the leader of mandalore Clearly, he's got to seek absolution in the in the the living water of the mines of Mandalore. I'm sure I'm messing something up in there, but something that to that effect. But Mandalore has been destroyed. We saw that amazing visuals to to that the uh, the Empire destroying Mandalore. <sighs> he gave up the, the spear, turned it into. Chainmail for Grogu, which 
is adorable. Although I feel like, again, he gave up a lot of Beskar for that. Because just a tiny little parcel. But anyway. And he's going to go pick up a little friend. So we I have to believe in the next episode or two, we're going to see Grogu in the, the droid bay of this new ship wearing chain mail and these two amazing characters helping out Boba and Fennec in their war against the Pikes. I mean, it's it's, it's amazing. It's everything you want. In it, it, it's so weird because we've had Boba for you know since 1980, you know over 40 years. We've had Din Djarin for three years, and yet it feels like Boba Fett. The Book of Boba Fett is a spin-off of The Mandalorian. And technically it is, even though the character's so much older. But bringing, the, bringing Pedro Pascal and The Mandalorian into The Book of Boba Fett is just so much fun. We had this great extended sequence of um, building this new ship, which harkens back to Episode 1 in Naboo, except it's been tweaked out and muscled up, and it's, you know, it's just a custom hot rod now. So, so different from the Razor Crest. Um, it'll be interesting to see it the first time in battle. We got to see Amy Sedaris, we got to see um, the X-Wing uh, pilot, from our, our episode with the frog lady. Um, I call him Kim's Convenient because that's where he's from. He's from a Canadian sitcom called Kim's Convenience, also home to the actor who plays Shang-Chi in Marvel Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Just a super fun episode. I hope you guys are were smiling through it as much as I was just now. I can't wait to see where this goes in episode six. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts about this episode in particular and the series so far in general. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, the best way is to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash neiltalks. Supporters are the reason why I can continue to do Neil Talks on a daily basis like I do. So until next time, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. Take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.